Every single solid object to some extent has the ability to stretch and this ability of the object to stretch is known as the object's elasticity. Now the amount the object stretches depends on the force acting on the object and the relationship between force and the amount the object stretches is given by Hooke's law. So the force acting on the object that is stretching the object is equal to K, our proportionality constant which depends on the type of solid being used multiplied by the change in X also known as the object's elongation. Now, let's suppose we have the following column, and the column is stationary, it's not stretched. So in this position, the object's change in x is zero. Now, let's suppose we take a very heavy mass and we hook it onto our column, onto our solid column, and the force of gravity acts on the mass, which in turn acts on our solid object, and the distance that our object stretches is given by change in x. So if we want to calculate what the force acting on the object is, and we know what the change in x is, what our elongation is, and we know the proportionality constant k of the object, we can simply multiply these two quantities and we get the force acting on the object, on our solid column. Now, if we wanted to, we could also plot this equation on the xy plane. So let's suppose the y-axis is our force, and the force is given in newtons, and the x-axis is the change in x, it's the object's elongation when that force acts. Now, the region from the point 0 to the point 1 is known as the elastic region. Along this region, our solid follows Hooke's law. So this slope is simply the value of k. Because k is positive, the slope is also positive. Now, there is also something known as the proportionality limit point. If the force is higher than this point here, than the limit, then this equation will no longer hold. From this point to this point, which is known as the plastic region, the force acting on the object is not directly proportional to our elongation. The relationship between force and our elongation in this plastic region is somewhat complicated and this law is not observed. This law only works, only holds in the elastic region which is given by this distance here. Now, there's also a point known as the breaking point. In other words, if the force that acts on our object that stretches the object reaches the breaking point, the object will snap, it will break. So, let's suppose we have the following example. What force is required to stretch an object with a proportionality constant of 2,000 newtons per meter, a distance of 40 centimeters? So let's suppose we have the following solid object and we apply a force on the solid object. Now we want to calculate what the force is knowing that it displaces a distance of 0.4 meters. So we take 0.4, we multiply it by our constant 2000 and we get 800 newtons. So the force applied on our solid object is 800 newtons. Let's move on to part B. Find the distance an object stretches if the constant is 10,000 newtons per meter and the applied force is 1,000. So once again, we assume that the force is lower than the limit, so we can use this equation. So we basically bring the k to this side, and we have force divided by k is equal to change in x, what we're looking for. So 1,000 divided by 10,000 gives us 0.1 meter, or equivalently, 10 centimeters. So in part b, our object will stretch a distance of 10 centimeters. Now, also, notice that if we're within this region and we remove the force, the object will snap back to place. 
But if we're in this region, if we're in the plastic region, and we remove the force, the object will not move back to place. It will remain in its current position.